Are you wasting hours managing Azure VMs one at a time? That stops today. Let's use custom script extensions with PowerShell to manage all of them fast. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos. If you've ever had to make changes to a lot of Azure VMs, you know that logging into each to update them is not the most efficient way to do it. Coming up, we'll use Azure custom script extensions with PowerShell to modify groups of Azure VMs. Before that, you know the drill. Please like, subscribe, and share with a friend and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. That helps me grow this channel. Check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop, Hybrid Identities with Windows 80 and Enter ID, Windows 365 with Intune Management, and my newest course, A Beginner's Guide to the AZ900. Links are below. And thank you, channel members. Your support is appreciated. Back to it. In a previous video, we updated Windows VMs with custom script extensions through the portal. This approach works well for one-off deployments or updates, but it doesn't scale well with large environments. It's not an enterprise option. To harness the full potential of Azure in large-scale or enterprise settings, automation is key. In this video, we run custom script extensions against Windows VMs with PowerShell. PowerShell enables us to make changes across multiple resources all at one time. By leveraging custom script extensions directly from PowerShell, we can automate configuration management, application installation, and system updates across multiple virtual machines. The custom script extension we use in the demo coming up is the same one used in a previous video. It demonstrates how to make registry changes, download files and applications, and install software with Chocolaty. It's intended to demonstrate the power of custom script extensions and to use as a template for your own changes. We'll use the AZ PowerShell module to add the custom script extension to one or more Azure VMs. There are two PowerShell commands available to run custom script extensions. Set AZ VM extension is used for multiple extension types. We have to specify a custom script extension with this command. The other is set AZ VM custom script extension. This is designed only to deploy custom script extensions. This is the one we'll use in the demo. Coming up, we'll explore multiple methods of running custom script extensions from PowerShell. We'll start with a one-liner to target a specific VM using a publicly available custom script on a public GitHub repository, for example, and then a custom script secured in an Azure Blob storage account. After that, we'll target multiple VMs with looping commands in PowerShell. We'll also view the status of the custom script extensions and then run a command to remove the custom script extensions from VMs. Let's jump into PowerShell and VS Code to get started. Here we are in VS Code. I'm gonna do a quick review of this custom script. Although if you're watching this, you're likely comfortable enough with PowerShell to figure it out. And of course, a link to this script and the commands we're gonna use coming up are in the description below. The first section is the description, notes, parameter information, and a disclaimer. Try it before you trust it. Next up is the parameter section. The version of the script I used in the previous video, the one on custom script extensions through the portal, just used variables. That made me sad because it was limiting, but it was simple. I upgraded the variables to parameters in this version. There are three that are mandatory, so we'll need to add those parameters when we run the custom script extension. Later, we'll see how the script downloads and installs bginfo. The script also downloads a config file from my GitHub repo. You're welcome to use that or create your own. By the way, if you don't wanna host these scripts or config files publicly, you can use a secure access or SAS URI to a file in an Azure storage account. The storage account is public, but locked down using the storage account key. I included more information on that in the previous video. A link to that is also below. Next, it adds a logging folder and creates a log function. Logging always helps with troubleshooting. Then it creates a directory where it will download files. The script uses try catch blocks for logging errors along with comments. Again, that helps with troubleshooting. Next, it sets the time zone of the VM. With this, it's simply running a PowerShell command. After that, it sets the registered owner and organization information. I never really set this in my lab, but it's a nice example of adding registry settings. Next, it downloads and installs bginfo. A lot of these commands also have tests in them. For example, seeing if bginfo is already installed before it runs the installer. This helps make the script item potent. If it's ran multiple times, we'll end up with the same result. After that, there's code to add bginfo to the startup folder in the start menu. This is a way to start a program at login. 
It's kind of old school, but so am I. This would be a good time to remind you that this script is not about what you should do. It's intended as examples of what you can do. After that, it checks to see if Chocolaty is installed, and if not, it installs it. And then finally, it checks to see if Google Chrome is installed, and if not, it installs it. That's the custom script we're going to run against multiple VMs with PowerShell. Let's take a look at that next. Here's our first command. This is a one-liner, well, kind of. I had to break it up so we can read it without scrolling. In case you're unaware, the space and backtick at the end of each line, with nothing after it, tells PowerShell that the command continues on the next line. This is kind of like word wrapping a command. Notice that the last line doesn't have a backtick. That tells PowerShell it's the end of the command. It's important that there's nothing after the backtick, not even comments. I learned that the hard way. This uses the set az custom script extension command, targeting the resource group of our VMs, then the VM by name, its location or region, and the file URI. The file URI is the path to the publicly available script. This version of the script is hosted on GitHub. Let's hop over there to see how I got that. Here we are at GitHub in the Seraltos tools repo. If we go to scripts under VM, let's open CSE with params example.ps1. Next, we'll click where it says raw to get a link to this file. Now we can use the link in the browser to reference that file. Let's go back to VS Code. The file URL is the path to the publicly available file. As another option, you could use a SAS URI to a file in an Azure Blob container to add some security to that file. Although the file is available over the public internet, only those with a secure access signature can read the file. Run specifies the script to run, and name is the name of the custom script extension. We'll need that to view the status and remove custom script extensions from a VM. Arguments supply the parameters to the script. Remember, our script has at least three parameters that are mandatory. This is a text or string field. Notice the values are wrapped in a quote. This is passed as parameters when the command runs. There are other strings that need to be in quotes like the central standard time time zone. Central standard time is three words. We need to pass that to the command in quotes as well. To do that, we use the backtick again. Only this time, it's an escape character. It's what helps us define a string within a string. That is required when we run a command this way. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, we know what it's doing, let's highlight and run it against the Windows VM CSE Demo 1. It's gonna take it a second to run. For this example, let's hop over to the VM in the portal to see the extension. Here we are at the VM. If we go to Settings, Extensions and Applications, there is our custom script extension. It shows the status of transitioning. It will take a couple minutes to finish. The video will pause here until it's done. Okay, we finished and now it shows provisioning succeeded. Let's go back to VS Code. It finished and it shows the results. Next, we'll run the same command, only this time our script is in a blob container on an Azure storage account. And in this case, we're not using a SAS URI. The command is similar to the one we just ran. For this example, I'm making greater use of the backticks to make it more readable. And because backticks mean continue to the next line, I'm still calling this a one-liner. We have the VM name, CSE Demo 2, the location, and the name of the custom script extension. This time, instead of passing in a file URI, we're providing the storage account name, storage account key, the container name, and the file name. By the way, case is important with this option. Your best bet is to copy and paste these values from the storage account. Let's go to the storage account and take a look at that now. Here we are at the storage account. There's the name. If we go to security and networking, then access keys. This is where we get our storage account key. There are two of them. That makes it easier to rotate the keys. You can use either of these keys. Just remember to update your script if you do rotate the keys. And I'll rotate the keys for this account before you watch this video. We can use the copy button to copy it and then paste it into our script. And I should point out it's bad practice to leave storage account keys, passwords, or any other type of credentials in the script. It would be better to pull that value from a key vault at runtime. That's out of scope for this video, but I wanted to call it out as a security risk. Anybody who has access to the script will have access to that storage account key. 
Okay, next, let's go under data storage containers. And we have our CSE demo container. Let's open that. And there's the VM hyphen CSE params file we'll use for this example. Let's go back to VS Code. And again, that's where you can gather all the information, copy and paste it into the script. After that, we have the run command. This is the name of the script that will run. And then we have arguments. This is the same as the last example, backticks and all. And at the end, I added no wait. With this, the job is submitted and we don't have to wait for it to finish. This option frees up the console while it runs. Now that we went through that, let's highlight and run this command. This example is running against another VM called CSE Demo 2. We'll hit F8 to run it. And now we get our console back right away. Now we could go back to the portal and track the progress that way. We don't want to do that though. Let's use the get azvm custom script extension command. I'll just slide this up a little bit. This gives us details of the custom script extension. And if we scroll down, the provisioning state is creating. We can run it again and it's still creating. So we can track that custom script extension with the get az custom script extension command. This will take a minute. I'll pause the video here and come back once it's finished. All right, some time has passed. Let's run the get az vm custom script extension command again. And there it shows succeeded. That's good. Now we can use custom scripts from an Azure storage account. Okay, that's all fine and good, but I promised we'd run a custom script against multiple VMs, and I'm a man of my word, so let's do that next. There's a little more code to build the command for this example. The first item is the resource group of the VMs. We need the resource group and a couple of the upcoming commands, so it's set as a variable. Let's highlight and run that. Of course, you'll need to update the resource group name for your environment. Next up, we have two options. You get to choose your own adventure here. We need to get a list or array of VM names. The first option uses the get azvm command to get the name of all VMs in the resource group. So this would run the custom script against all the VMs in that resource group. But what if we need to run the custom script against some, but not all of the VMs in a resource group? With the next option, we can build our own list. Each VM name is in double quotes for this example, separated by a comma. Follow the same pattern to add more. Now what you didn't see is that through the miracle of editing, I deleted and recreated the VMs in this resource group. The ones we added the custom script extension to previously. In a minute, we're gonna log into one just to verify it's working. But let's first run one of these commands to build our list. This example will use the get azvm option. Next, we have a for each loop. This loops through each VM in the VMs array. It uses the same storage account command we just reviewed. You could change this out for the public file example here as well. But you may have noticed one big difference. Instead of using backticks at the end of each line, this command uses splatting. This is where we put parameters for a command in a hash table. That's a table of key value pairs. The key is the parameter name, and the value is the value we're passing into the script. It's the same information, it's just formatted a little different. Splatting makes the code easier to read, the formatting is better, and it's a little easier to modify. All the information is the same as the last command with the exception of the argument line. Notice there's no backticks to use as an escape character. I learned that when using splatting, we don't need them. That learning took me about half an hour of troubleshooting. That's why I like to show multiple examples. And at the end, it runs the set az vm custom script extension, passing in the hash table of parameters. Let's log in and take a look at one of the VMs before we run the custom script. Here we are logged into the first VM and the time zone is not set to central US. If we open File Explorer, the log and download directory is not at the root of the C drive. If we open Windows version or Winver, there's no user or organization listed. And notice Chrome is not installed. Let's go back to VS Code. From VS Code, let's highlight and run that for each command. This command uses the no wait option, so let's take a look at the status of one of the VMs. 
TSC Demo 1 shows it's creating. This will take a minute to finish. The video will pause here again until it's done. All right, I think it finished. Let's run the get azvm custom script extension command again. And it shows succeeded. Let's go back to the VM. You'll notice right away Google Chrome is installed. Let's take a look at the time zone. That is now central US. Let's check win version. That's been updated as well. And if we open File Explorer, CSE downloads and the logs directory have been created. And we can see the script output in the log file. That's good. That means the custom script extension ran the custom script just as we expected. While we're logged into one of the virtual machines the extension ran on, let's view some of the custom script extension logs. If we go to C, Windows Azure, Logs, Plugins, Microsoft.Compute.Custom Script Extensions. Select the extension version. The extension output is logged to the files found in this directory. Next, if we go to C, Packages, Plugins, Microsoft Compute Custom Script Extension. Select the version again and Downloads. From here, we can view the script that was downloaded by the custom script extension. Let's go back to VS Code. Finally, there can only be one of any type of custom script extension on a VM. If we go back to the custom script extensions on one of the VMs in the portal, we can see this one has two extensions, but they're a different type. The publisher is Microsoft.Compute, and the extension type is custom script extension. We need to remove this before we can add another custom script extension of the same type. We'll go back to VS Code. We can remove them with the remove azvm custom script extension command. The last command on the screen uses that same array or list of VMs and loops through each removing the custom script extension. Since we already have VMs populated, we can just highlight and run. This command also uses no wait. So let's run get azvm custom script extension for CSE demo one. The provisioning state shows deleting. That's good. And again, this will take a minute to finish. I'll pause here and come back once it's done. Okay, let's give it another try. And we get an error. The status code is 404, not found. That's because it's been deleted. If we go back to the portal and refresh, we can see that custom script extension has been removed. That is how to run custom script extensions on one or multiple VMs with PowerShell. I hope that helps you better understand how to use PowerShell with custom script extensions on a Windows Azure VM. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.